Yeah. Oh, there we go. Right. Okay. Um, so, for the past three years, I've been trying to build a mechanical universal Turing machine. So, I'm just going to give a talk about how I made it and waffle on about computing history for about an hour. I haven't rehearsed any of this, so I don't really know how long it's going to take. Um, anyway, um, quick overview of what a Turing machine is, for those people who aren't familiar with it. Um, Alan Turing publishes Turing machine in a 1936 paper called On Computable Numbers. Um, and he's not really intending to build a computer or show a prototype for a computer. He's just trying to solve a mathematical problem at that time. Uh, but he comes up with this novel way of solving it, which involves a uh, universal computer. Um, um, and by universal, what we mean is that it's um, capable of doing anything that a deterministic machine can do. Uh, and in the past 70 years, um, all we've actually done with computers is made them faster and given them more memory. Uh, they're not actually capable of solving any more problems than Turing's original um, Turing machine was. Um, so, um, in the 19th century, Babbage had designed the analytical machine, which just happened to be a universal computer, but Babbage probably didn't quite realise the significance of that. He was really just trying to speed up um, human sort of mechanical uh, computation. Um, and Turing has taken a much more mathematical view of this and trying to formalise it and say what you can and what you can't do with a um, deterministic machine. Um, so, oh, that's wrong. Um, Turing's machine um, is basically just a long list of um, symbols. Um, um, and this is supposed to be written on an infinitely long tape. Um, which, from which you can read and write different symbols back on. Um, and it also gives you a list of instructions um, which tells you how to manipulate the symbols. So this will say, well, if you read a sigma off of there, then we need to um, write back a letter A and we'll change our internal state to state 4 or something like that. The point about this is it doesn't need a machine to actually do it. A human can come down and do all these instructions by hand. Um, and it's really, really simple. It's... Um, it's unambiguous as well. Can't go wrong with it. Um, um, so, um, on the screen there, he's also got this um, idea of internal state, which is basically the machine's internal memory. It doesn't need to be very big. Uh, you can imagine that as being similar to a modern computer's registers. Um, um, and that's, that's important because it determines how you change the symbols. Uh, find out where I am on here. told you I hadn't rehearsed it. Um, so, yeah, modern computer um, reads numbers out of memory um, and writes different numbers back into memory. That's pretty much all it does, millions of times every second. Um, um, the, the slight difference between the Turing machine and the modern computer in abstract terms is that a modern computer can access any part of its memory um, at any time it likes. It doesn't have to just go left or right one symbol, as Turing's machine does. Um, and that's